Hi friends, my name is Anjan Kumar. I am from Tech Crystal Group. Our Tech Crystal Group is bunch of is having bunch of guys who are tech savvy, uh, who are having 10 plus experience in, in this technical world. Uh, uh, we are going to cover the you know most recent development happened in this technical world. I will start with the debit card compromises, which has happened in the recent past. I am starting with the basic you know ATM transaction flow. So this ATM card or debit card is of two types, mainly uh, the mainly two types. The first is magnetic card, and other is EMB card. So this EMB stands for Europe Master Visa. So magnetic card is having magnetic strip, you know, in the back side of the ATM. So that is a black stripe. So that that is called the magnetic stripe card. So whenever we are inserting a card inside the card reader, now the card reader is a place in the ATM machine where we insert the card and the card data is being read. So so whenever we are inserting a card, this card data is read, we are entering a pin. So card data along with the pin block. Now again, whenever we are entering a pin, the pin is never transmitted in the network. Now again, new, um, two new things are there, network and acquiring bank. We are, covering, we are going to cover these two new terms. So the card data and the pin and the pin block. So whenever we are entering a pin, that pin is encrypted within that EPP or pin block uh, or this keypad or pin pad. EPP stands for electronic pin pad. Now the two words coming to the, the two new words, the acquiring bank. Normally the uh, this ATM transactions are of mainly three types. The first is owner's transactions. So in the in the in the owner's transaction. Suppose the, uh, the card is issued by the X bank and it is being used on the same bank's ATM. So that is called owner's transaction. The next one is issuer transaction. So a card is being issued by the X bank and that is being used at the Y bank ATM. So the X bank will call this transaction as issuer transaction. And for Y bank that will be acquired transaction. So X bank card is being used at the Y bank ATM. So for X bank, it is issuer transaction and Y bank has acquired the transaction of X bank. So the Y bank will call this transaction as acquirer bank. Hope I am uh, I'm, uh, I'm making sense I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm making clear about, clear you about the issuer and acquire transaction. Now, uh, now jumping to the second, you know, term that is network. <laughs> So in India, uh, predominantly we are having three networks. The one is run by PCI, other is MasterCard and Visa. So network is where the data is, you know, the data is being transmitted. So th these are, you know, these are mainly channels or, you know, these are find the bandwidth where the data is being transmitted through different banks. Now um, coming to the ATM transaction. So we are inserting a card the card data is being read the pin is again you know the pin block is generated at the epp level so the card detail along the pin block will come to the acquiring bank switch so it will come to the y bank switch so the card number the first digit uh, first six digit of the card is denotes uh, denotes bin the bin stands for bank identification number so based on first six digit the acquiring bank will come to know okay this card belongs to x bank so they can only authenticate this card okay so the y bank switch will transmit this data data means card data along with the pin block they will transmit the data to the network means npci Again, this NPCI, uh, around 99.9% of the ATM transactions are routed through NPCI network only. So in this case, the acquiring bank or Y bank switch will give the data to NPCI. NPCI will again give it to the X bank.
सो एक्स बैंक हैज यू नो इशू दैट कार्ड सो दे कैन ओनली ऑथेंटिकेट सो दे कैन ओनली चेक द कार्ड डिटेल वेदर इज इज ऑथेंटिक और नॉट एंड दे कैन ओनली वैलिडेट सो द डेटा इज लैंडिंग टू द एक्स बैंक स्विच एट द एक्स बैंक स्विच दे विल चेक द कार्ड डिटेल्स सो कार्ड डिटेल्स मीन्स द कार्ड नंबर वेदर द कार्ड नंबर इज यू नो राइट और नॉट अगेन इट विल चेक वेदर इट इज नॉट हॉट लिस्टेड इट विल चेक द एक्सपायरी एक्सपायरी यू नो एक्सपायरी ऑफ द कार्ड the pin block will be checked at their end and and if it and and if uh, if everything is you know good enough uh, the switch will transmit the account number to cbs to debit the account and after all these things the swing bank will send the you know response if everything is okay and it is a withdrawal transaction then the swing swing bank will send the details to acquiring bank to dispense the cash so through network the swing bank will send the details to the acquiring bank and acquiring bank switch will send the command to his atm to dispense the amount requested by the customer so this is the you know top level atm flow so you can read the uh, this these eight point i have covered all the eight points <coughs> now jumping to the you know uh this is the you know uh, image of atm machine uh, wherein wherein this part this card reader will be used more often in more often in subsequent slide and this is you know being used for uh, this atm frauds so other things are very much common so i am uh, uh, jumping to next slide so uh the most common forms of the atm frauds so i will cover the you know mainly uh, the main types of atm fraud and what are the modus operandi so how the fraud fraudster completes this uh, uh atm frauds so the first part is card skimming so in this case what is happening the fraudster is affixing a card skimming device about the above the card reader so it is a hardware device so the that hardware card skimming device is fixed above the card reader okay and again a wifi camera is fixed above the keypad so above the pin pad or keypad a wifi camera is fixed and a card skimming device is fixed above, above the card reader so whenever a customer is um, coming to the atm he is he is inserting a card in the card reader card reader is first you know going through card skimming device so all the magnetic data so all the card reader data is being captured at the card skimming device and also whenever he is uh, keying in the pin that pin is you know captured at the wifi camera and that fraudster is sitting around that atm only so he is he is capturing those pin so at any point of time he is going to the atm detaching that card skimming device so he is already having pin he is having card detail in the card skimming device so he will clone that card and he is having pin so he can use he can you know he can clone that card and make a uh, make a duplicate of that actual card and can use an at any atm or pos device now coming to the second uh, you know form of atm fraud the second form is keypad jamming jamming so in this case the you know common buttons in the epp or uh, or keypad is jammed uh, using glue or using you know chewing gums so what is happening in this case when a customer tries to you know press okay enter button after entering his pin details so so in this case you know nothing is happening so the screen is not moving so customer is in impression that machine is not working or hanged up so he tries to cancel the transaction but even the cancel button is also jammed so he thinks that you know the machine is not working he leaves the machine so in this case the fraudsters fraudster you know jumps to the machine atm machine 
and you you know normally the, this session is of 30 to 60 30 to 45 second so in this case uh, the fraudster uses that session to complete the transaction so he he's, he enters into that session and he do all the transaction because you know customer has already entered the pin so he used that uh, he used those you know the buttons to withdraw the you know cash so in uh, you know uh, he, uh, in this case normally he jamming and again unjamming those common buttons to do the do his you know uh, do this fraud fraud now coming to the third part the third third part is card swapping uh, what is happening this is you know this is the common uh, uh, atm fraud atm card fraud in case of merchant transaction or merchant or we call it at post transactions so what is happening in this case whenever customers you know enters any merchant establishment whether restaurant restaurant or petrol station or anywhere and he uses all his you know uh, he uses his debit card for transaction so what attendant is doing in this case whenever the customer is entering this atm pin so anyhow you know the attendant is keeping eye on the pin entered and he is noting down somewhere so the attendant is having the pin attendant is having the pin number what is happening with the card so whenever the the customer is giving you know the card to the uh, attendant who is basically fraudster so he is he is uh, he is swiping that card and in return he is giving a dummy card so dummy card is identical to the customer card and also it may happen that the attendant is having you know other scheming device so once so he is he is swiping in the actual POS device and also swiping the card at the card scheming device but the, if the data is you know swap the card is swapped at the, uh, at the scheming device the data is captured he has already noted down that atm uh, that atm pin so after that whenever the customer is leaving that you know that merchant or that restaurant uh, he is making that attendant is making that a uh, clone of the card so he is he is he is having duplicate card and he is having the pin so in this case he can carry out the normal transactions and and, and 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 can do the fraud and now you know we have covered the most you know the common forms or no normal uh, you know the modus operandi of the atm frauds now we will cover the what are do and don'ts in most of the atm transactions so as to avoid most of the frauds so the first important point is change your pin regularly our you know the expert the expert says it is better to change pin in every three months and the other part uh, other suggestion is that whenever you are you doing any atm transaction you maintain a complete pri privacy so normally shoulder surfing uh, what is mean by shoulder surfing is that somebody is you know behind you and by any means he is he is uh, he is you know he is he is checking your pin and and coming to uh, and get to know is uh, the pin entered by you so uh, you should you should keep your privacy whenever you are doing atm transactions and the third part is that whenever you are completing the atm transaction make sure that you you you, uh, you know uh, enter the uh, you are getting a welcome screen at the uh, you know after completing transaction and one of the uh, important you know point is that you must register your current mobile number with the issuing bank issuing bank bank means whenever like x bank is you are having bank of x uh, you are having card of x bank so your current mobile number must be registered at the x bank cbs so in this case what will happen whenever you will do the transaction you will give it an intimation that the transaction is completed this amount is being withdrawn and this amount is left out in your atm transaction so you will be aware that you are doing like in case your card is compromised so you will get a sms and you can you know uh, instantly hotlist or block the card uh, okay so this is one of the important part and uh, 
you should keep a watch around the atm machine uh, atm machine and pos machine whether any extra device is attached or not and in case you know if you feel that your atm is compromised atm or debit card is compromised instantly you know report to the to the uh, issuing bank customer uh, customer uh, call center and hot list or block that card and uh, and what about the don'ts a don'ts is like never write your pin on the card it is better to memorize your pin number because pin is the most important part of any debit card transaction okay never ne you know never take help from strangers in case of doing any transaction if you are not aware ask to the bank guys or read the manual to do, do the transaction and the you know most important part never disclose your pin to anybody including bank employees or family members because pin card belongs to you and pin should be confined to you only and these are the you know important don'ts if you are doing if you are following these do and don'ts uh, i feel you can avoid most of the atm frauds now coming to the you know the most recent atm fraud happened in india uh, it happened in you know mid of uh, september to october uh, this is being flashed in most of the newspaper along with the media uh so you know npci uh, which is the technical arm of rbi for atm related transaction they have you know they came uh, up with a report uh, a report wherein they have said necessary correction acts, uh, actions have already been taken and hence there is no reason for bank customers to panic and you know uh, this npci has advised uh, has issued an advisory to all the banks to re card to the, all the suspected cards so if the bank is suspecting that this card range or this number of card is in suspicious you know is in suspicious suspicious bucket then they should re card that card means reissue that card block the original card and issue a new card so and they have they have given the current position of this uh, this fraud so they have i mean you know the first statement shows uh, uh, the first statement what they have given that this fraud uh, fraud is mainly this fraud related trans transaction is mainly coming from us and china and predominantly from china okay uh, and and they are you know they are doing all the auditing with the help of visa mastercard because these are three major players rupay mastercard and visa so they are doing you know uh, they are doing the audit with the help of all these networks and the next point is that uh, next point is that they have said uh, the fpci had said that uh, probably a payment switch or you know atm switch server is compromised somewhere so they are doing analysis on this they haven't come up with their findings so they are doing uh, their you know analysis uh, their all the all the you know post facto analysis and uh, they have said that though there is no complaint from rupee card holder see the rupee card is no, as of now is confined to the domestic transactions only so rupee card if you are compromising rupee card and doing transaction from you know any foreign countries so it will not happen so as of now rupee card is they haven't received any complaint because it's not possible to do any any you know foreign transaction with the atm with the rupee card now coming with the facts uh, facts they have told that the complaints of fraudulent withdrawal are limited to card of 19 banks with 641 customers the total amount involved is 1.3 cr which is reported by various bank banks so uh, they have instructed uh, the npci have instructed all the you know uh, uh, banks which are affected by uh, this fraud to recard instantly so what they are doing they are blocking the original card and giving the new card to the card holders okay and safer side uh, what the affected bank did they have blocked around 32 lakhs or 3.2 million card so they have you know hotlisted that card 
and issued the recard so as to you know curtail the losses and uh, you know the curtail the mainly the losses and probably it was you know all the atm switches are pci dss compliant again this pci dss is a uh, you know uh, is a uh, they are a, they are a, you know international body which set a standard for you know all the atm transactions they so they are setting environment wherein the atm transactions should happen so they are having a set of rules so so uh, Uh, probably uh, uh, they are going to conduct a forensic audit of the switch of that bank and that will probably you know give the what was the reason for the compromise how that happened what was the modus operandi so uh, this this is the main point on uh, and 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 based on the advisory issued by the npci uh Uh, npca also uh, uh, requested uh, you know the the uh, the, uh, the affected bank to you know advise their customer to change their change their pin so the the banks are contacting their customer to change their pin so they are uh, you know uh, on a safer side bank has requested most of the bank has requested all the card holders to to change their card and for their you know compromised card they are they are ask they are giving fresh card or recard uh, they are giving recard to the new uh, their customers and npci is closely you know working with the all the stakeholders and doing the you know forensic investigation to uh, to know the you know to uh, to know the modus operandi of this fraud now the you know the, the, i am coming to the last slide wherein the, the steps taken by the most of the banks Uh, uh, uh based on you know based on my knowledge uh all the all the banks have you know blocked the suspended suspected card range so they have uh, though so, uh, so they have blocked and you know some of the banks have barred the atm transaction coming from the foreign countries mostly china until all the suspected card uh, cards are recarded so on the safer side they are blocking the you know foreign transaction mostly from china before giving the recard to the you know uh, uh, compromised card and they have advised all their customer to change their pin immediately so this is a advisory given by the banks to all the customers to avoid any further fraud and you know i have already given uh, the do and don'ts uh, to be done to you know Uh, uh to avoid this fraud so i feel most of the atm frauds can be avoided if you are following those if we are if you are adhering to that do and don'ts uh, so this is all from my part uh, kindly subscribe uh, you know and link my web page i will be coming shortly with uh, a new development in the atms so thank you all hope uh, hope you have gained something from my video thanks thanks very much